A little over three minutes plus additional time remaining. As so often, Portugal's hopes rest on Cristiano Ronaldo's shoulders. Ronaldo. It's a warm, indeed very humid night here in Sochi. There is a very tangible sense of anticipation. It's Portugal's first game at the 2018 FIFA World Cup Russia. Cristiano Ronaldo is appearing at his fourth World Cup, the third in which he'll captain his country. Yeah, so Portugal went into the 2018 World Cup as European champions. They had won Euro 2016, beat France the host in the final. I think there were a lot of expectations about Portugal going into the World Cup that perhaps they could finally go farther than just the group stage and the round of 16. Cristiano faces the nation he has just spent the last nine years plying his trade in, Spain. I think that definitely motivated Ronaldo himself. You know, a lot of those players would have been his teammates, of course, at Real Madrid. He really wanted to leave everything on the field, and that's exactly what we saw. Ronaldo. Is that a penalty? It is! It doesn't take long for CR7 to make his mark. Inside the opening three minutes, Cristiano Ronaldo fell in the penalty area. Cristiano now has the chance to score for his country from the penalty spot. He's been here before. Twenty-one-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo waits for referee Pular's whistle, composes himself and scores. He had been at the Euros two years prior and they made it to the finals, losing out to Greece. He was already, arguably, Portugal's most potent attacking weapon and that was a really good Portugal team. The early noughties team that Ronaldo found himself part of was a phenomenal team in terms of talent. One reason why Ronaldo did well at that tournament, he wasn't Portugal's sole focus point. You know, you had Simão Sabroso, who was doing very well. Of course, you had Luis Figo, you had Deco. The Netherlands game in the last 16 was obviously a brutal experience for Ronaldo. The Netherlands tried to take him out of the game, take him out of the equation, and that's what they did. An absolutely horrendous tackle. That was a very scandalous game where you had 16 yellow cards, you had four red cards. I mean, that was a really difficult game for both teams. Uh, for Cristiano, that was a learning moment. As he got older and he got fitter and more sort of muscular, if you like, stronger, uh, that was probably yeah, a game we would have been able to ride more. It was more what happened in that game against England that took all the headlines. There is uh, this uh, foot of uh, Rooney uh, against Ricardo Carvalho and uh, Rooney and all the English team say that uh, Cristiano go to the referee to say uh, give him red card. And that is walking over to the bench, he gives a nice little wink and of course everybody in England understandably was very upset. I mean, it definitely, I think, was an early sign of what was to come over the next few years in terms of Cristiano Ronaldo and his personality. The England game actually ended perfectly for Ronaldo despite all this controversy as he took the winning penalty in the shootout. It is! It's all over for England. Portugal go into the last four. They overcame them on penalties and then lost to a French team as inspired by Zinedine Zidane. It was absolutely exceptional in that game. His World Cup at the moment, Zinedine Zidane. Portugal tried to get back into it, they were quite close on a few occasions. It goes for goal, Bartes can't hold it. Oh, what a chance miss. But just wasn't to be. Cristiano Ronaldo against David De Gea. It's 1-0 Portugal, and was there ever any doubt? It just had to be him. Portugal's lead only lasts 20 minutes. Pepe gets the header and goes down. Play continues, it's Diego Costa. Can he get the shot away? Costa scores! 
Well, Ronaldo's mentality, isn't it? I think that's what makes him the player he is. Just before half-time, Cristiano has slipped the ball on the edge of the box. Ronaldo with the shot, oh, it's gone in! An error from David De Gea, and Cristiano Ronaldo gets Portugal's second goal of the night. Portugal are back in front. Tonight, Cristiano is on a mission against Spain, perhaps motivated by revenge for what happened in the past. Ronaldo of 2010 was a very, very different Ronaldo to the Ronaldo of 2006. Between those two World Cups, he signs for Real Madrid. He becomes the most expensive player to sign for the club and in the world at that point in time for 94 million euros. And at that point, he had become the leader and the captain of Portugal. With a room in which to turn for Ronaldo. Made room for the shot. Oh, off the post. What a strike! He had a different manager to play under. First, he had different teammates, arguably the best player in the world after winning Champions League with Manchester United. The attention is drawn to him much more than before. Here's Ronaldo, no free kick. Carlos Queiroz, the, the coach, had come in, and fortunately for Portugal, it all went horribly wrong. The relationship between Ronaldo and Queiroz was very strained, and I think that was really stemmed from the tactics employed by Queiroz. His whole tactic seemed to be, let's just make our team as difficult to score against as possible, and our attacking system would just be whack the ball up to Ronaldo and let him work some magic on his own and it just didn't work at all. Great opportunity here for Brazil to concede. Ronaldo scored once uh, during that tournament, albeit it was an excellent goal uh, against North Korea where he did a sort of juggling act where he balanced the ball on the back of his neck and sort of rolled it over the top of his head and then scored. And then it was the derby, uh, the Iberian derby. And they got knocked out to Spain, who at least for them a bit of comfort is knowing that they went on to win the whole tournament altogether. And they were a fabulous Spanish side. Nobody really could take them apart. Nobody could really beat them at all. It's true that Spain have a beautiful team at this time. I think there was a lot of pressure on Cristiano Ronaldo to be this big figure since he was this worldwide superstar. But unfortunately, he came up against this Spanish wall that he just wasn't able to break through. After the game, Ronaldo uh, was asked what went wrong and I think he told the Germans to ask Carlos Queiroz in quite a pointed fashion. I think it's one World Cup which you can't really blame him at all for his lack of production. It was definitely just the team wasn't set up to get the best out of him at all. The World Cup disappointing in the finish, disappointing in not, not scoring the goals that people expected him to score, but it was the foundation for him as a player to, to improve on and build. Ronaldo with the shot, oh it's gone in! Eight years later and Portugal are now the ones with the upper hand. They lead 2-1 with 45 minutes left on the clock. Cristiano Ronaldo has turned this group match back in Portugal's favour. With Spain applying more pressure, there's not too much Cristiano can do, except hope his defence will hold firm. Silva with a little chip. Back across, goal turned in! Diego Costa strikes again! A simple free kick move from Spain. And for the second time tonight in Sochi, Spain have equalised. But then there's not much the defence can do when the ball falls to Nacho. Now it might drop for the shot here. Oh, what a shot that is! redeemed himself in style. Thanks to a wonder strike, Spain have turned the game around. They now lead 3-2, and it looks like history is set to repeat itself. It seems Cristiano can't shake his bad luck at the World Cup. Germany lead! The height of Hummels! Germany get another one, and they do. Terrible, terrible defending. Germany have got four. What a dreadful day and an awful start for Portugal. 
So in the way that Ronaldo had progressed quite a lot between 2006 and 2010, he progressed equally a far distance between 2010 and 2014. He went into that tournament, a Champions League winner with Real Madrid, Ballon d'Or winner. It was not a great tournament. Uh, he had a lot of problem, uh, physical problem, but he wanted to stay, he wanted to be there. So he decided to play through the pain and to play through the injury because he felt that without him, they weren't going to be able to advance. But it didn't matter in the end because it just didn't, it didn't work out. Germany were phenomenal in 2014, obviously went on to win the tournament, but nevertheless to get beat 4-0, it was Portugal's uh, heaviest defeat at a World Cup. It was pretty humiliating. Portugal were really Ronaldo-centric at this time. Against the United States, that defense, they, they really put a clamp down and it was very difficult for him. Yedlin with the ball in, Bradley! Chance for him, USA, and it's a goal! It was quite amazing actually that Ronaldo managed to, to pull out of the bag a chance to keep their World Cup alive just by the slimmest of threads. Virgil, the last kick of the game. Unless we have a most dramatic twist in the final seconds now, into the last 30! Oh, and we have! It's a dream of a cross from Ronaldo! And Varela buries it! He was going to play until the last whistle of every game. That's his mentality. That is what he drives for. He's not going to rest. But I think he figures, you know what, even if I have, you know, my leg amputated, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to still try and score or at least set somebody else up to score because he's just that focused and that determined. For the last game against Ghana, all sorts of permutations, Portugal was still in of a shout of qualifying that basically they needed to win and win big. Ronaldo managed to score the goal, but it was already quite near to towards the end of the game. Maybe now Ronaldo, yes! He has goal number 50 of his international career. It was too little too late at that point and it, it, the damage was done and they weren't able to get out of the group and they crashed out very early on in the World Cup. In a very disappointing World Cup for Portugal, he was probably Portugal's best player. It was probably at that moment maybe that the gap between Portugal's best player, i.e. Ronaldo, and the rest of the team was most exposed. It's definitely a World Cup where Portugal paid a price for just not being fit enough. Ronaldo goes down, gets a free kick. Challenges by Piquet. Now this is a key moment. We know who's going to strike it. The game approaches its final minutes. Cristiano stands over a free kick, displaying his trademark stance, this for his hat-trick, and to save Portugal from defeat. Ronaldo. Oh, genius! Absolute genius! Would you believe it? It was a phenomenal goal. Everybody at that point just kind of fell out of their seats and said, okay, it's not Spain's day. We just need to accept that this is all about Cristiano Ronaldo. You don't see those individual performances in the World Cup that often. It actually sums up Ronaldo. Brilliant goal, scored in a huge game at a critical moment. Exemplary, perfection, and it's a hat-trick for Cristiano Ronaldo. In their next game against Morocco, Cristiano's fine form continues as he scores the decisive goal in a promising a performance. Time. In by Moutinho and in by Ronaldo! He is a sensation! He would be his 85th goal in the international uh, scene. He would pass Ferenc Puskas and so he then became the highest goal scorer in Europe in international football and the second overall in the world. Against IR Iran, a Quaresma wonder goal puts Portugal ahead. Was Cristiano's World Cup luck turning at last? This will give Portugal breathing space. Ronaldo is denied. And the game and the group are still very much alive. Cristiano's missed penalty ultimately costs Portugal the top spot in their group, 
which means they'll face Uruguay in the round of 16, a formidable opponent. Round of 16, they run into Uruguay, which is a tough matchup because their defense is geared, it's very physical, really caused uh, problems for Cristiano Ronaldo. Wall was able to deal with the considerable threat, not his finest hour from a free kick. Suarez over on that far side, and it's pinpoint. Oh, dangerous cross, Cavani! It's them again! Unfortunately for Portugal, they really only got going in the second half when they were really backs against the wall. Adrian Silva shot the deflection for a corner. Pepe has done it! Well, there's the answer they were looking for! But they really didn't do themselves justice, and I think Uruguay were deserved winners at the end. Two brilliant goals, you have to say. Fernandez, four on three for a moment here. Cavani, brilliant! That is pure gold! For the fourth time in his career, Cristiano Ronaldo is knocked out of the World Cup. It's all over! And maybe it is the end in terms of World Cups for the great Cristiano Ronaldo. In that World Cup, he showed one last time, if it is the last time, that he is such a prolific goal scorer that is legendary. I think 2018 in a way sums up Ronaldo's international career, which is exceptionally talented, a play for the big occasion, but just part of a team that bar France in 2016 has never been good enough to, to win one of the major honours. We don't know if that will be his last World Cup. I don't think it will be. I think there's a very good chance that we could see him at Qatar 2022. He'll be 37 years old. By the time that World Cup rolls around, Ronaldo will not be Portugal's sole attacking threat. So you could argue that the stage is perfectly set for him to really thrive in this World Cup as part of an exciting attacking team as the, the elder statesman and perhaps put those former World Cups where he didn't perhaps do himself justice, you know, put that to rights.